Hello again. In this video, I'd like to show you how to change the text of a UI element using a C Sharp script. We will go over how to change the text for both the older legacy elements and the text mesh pro elements. The code for both of them will almost be identical, but I want to be thorough and go over them anyway. So here on screen, you can see that I have created a small UI setup that is good enough for this demonstration. I thought a good example to show you how this could be used is when the player has an on-screen objective or task, or to show the current status of a task. Okay, and if you look over here, our canvas game object here, the parent at the top, this is where our script will be attached to. It can be attached to anywhere, but I thought for this demonstration, why not attach it to the top there? And as you can see in the inspector, this has four slots for the UI elements that we will be changing. And underneath, we have four variables that we will display on screen. So if I go ahead and click play, you will see here that this text will change. Cool, there we go. Now you can see this text and this text here has changed via code, but this can also be changed in real time. So if we go back over to the inspector panel here, and we can edit the first string value here for objective A. So we'll change this to, let's change it from fly to the moon to, I don't know, crash into the moon. And here you can see, as soon as we change the objective variable in the script, it has immediately changed the text on screen. Perfect. So now you know that this can support strings. Now let's change this float value here underneath by clicking and dragging on this name here. And in this example, you can see, or you can imagine that this is showing the player the current distance towards their target in this example, which in this case would be the moon. And if we keep going, you can see it goes into minus. So we, we have indeed crashed into the moon on that one. And lastly, here we have a Boolean value, which is currently set to false. So if we change it from false to true, it has also updated on the screen. So in this case, we have indeed thrown a snowball at an alien. True. Perfect. So that's a quick demo of what we'll go over. As always, if you'd like to jump straight to the code, a GitHub link is in the description below. Uh, please leave a like if that helps you out at all. And let's get started. So usually I like to start with an empty scene and go from there. But all I've done here is create this UI, which would take a bit of time. So I'm going to skip that step now and uh, start from here. Now to create this UI, I haven't done anything special. All I've done is right click here. I've gone UI and text, text mesh pro here. And then for the legacy elements, I've gone legacy and text here. Now, if text mesh pro isn't an option, you can go window package manager. You can change packages to unity registry. Wait for that to load. And then if you scroll down here, you will see uh, Text Mesh Pro here. And then you can install it here or remove it here. And then when you go back to Packages My Project, you can see it will be here. Now you don't have to use Text Mesh Pro uh, text elements, but I use them because they give you a lot more functionality. So that's why I prefer them. And when you do create, if we go UI and Text Mesh Pro, when you do create one of these for the first time, you'll get a pop-up. Uh, I'll just display it on screen now. You'll get a pop-up like this, and you just want to click yes on the first option here. Okay, and then if you look at my canvas, you can see um, I've set it up as passive and active objects. Um, you can set it up however you want. All this means to me is these are the objects that don't get interacted with, and these are the ones that do. So what I've done here is I've created two text mess pro UI element objects, one and two, and then I've created two legacy ones here. Now, personally for me, a good idea is to set the default text to the name of the game object. So when you're just looking at the screen and you want to know what object this is, for example, you can just look at the name and click it straight away. Otherwise, if it was set to the default, I think it's new text then you look at that, you want to select it, but you have no idea where it is. So, so that might be quite useful as well. Just undo that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our script, C Sharp script. Um, I'm going to call it change UI text. 
and then I'm going to want to attach it to the canvas here, which is our parent UI object. Now, when you do create these text objects here, so when you go UI and then text, it will automatically create the canvas and event system for you. Now, don't delete these as they are needed by the UI system. Now, it doesn't matter where you put this script, but for this video, we'll just stick it on the canvas. It doesn't matter where it goes, but it makes sense to go there for this. Okay, so on screen, you can see that we have, as an example, two objectives and then two current statuses of those objectives. So let's go ahead and try and get these objects into our script first. So we'll open up our script. We'll create some variables here. So these are going to be our UI text game objects because we want to gain access to these game objects in our script. And then we'll say public game object and text mesh pro underscore objective. So we're using the keyword public. So when we save this script, we'll then have access to this variable, but inside the editor. And you can see I've used the word objective because this refers to the objective text here. So we'll go ahead and make another one, which will be text mesh pro and then distance. So now we have access to the two text mesh pro objects. Let's get access to these two legacy ones as well. So we'll create another one and we'll call this one legacy underscore objective and then last but not least legacy underscore success so if we save this and go back to unity wait for it to update now if we click on our canvas game object here you can see we have now created slots here for our four game objects to go into so that will give the script access to these four objects directly okay so we'll say objective a distance, uh, objective B, and success. Cool, so now those are plugged in. Let's go back to the script. Now let's create another section here. This will be our game variables. So this will store the actual data that we want to display in these text elements. So I'm going to say public string objective A, uh, public string objective B, And then I can say here public float distance and public ball success. So to be thorough, we will be changing the text on screen with two strings, a float and a ball. Now we're not gonna use an int because a float and an int will be pretty much the same way anyway. So we'll come back to these variables later. Let's create one more section, which will be the text components. So if we go back to Unity quickly and we click on one of these text elements here, we can see that in the inspector, you can see a list of components. Now the text component here is the one we want to gain access to, to change the text element here. And if we click on the legacy one and we go to the text component of that, there's also a section here for where the text will be. So this is the text that we want to change via code. So if we go back to our script again, we want to gain access to those components. We have the game objects themselves, but we don't have the components yet. Now the type for the components on the text mesh pro objects is text mesh pro u GUI. And we'll call this one text mesh pro underscore objective underscore text. And similar for the distance one, we'll say underscore distance. Now, if you want to use or gain access to this type, we will have to use another library here. So we will say using, I think it's T-M-P-R-O. Yep. So now we're gonna be bringing this in. So this type will also be brought in as well. So now we have access to that. And then for the legacy components, it's just text. Uh, we'll call our first one legacy objective text. And then for the second one, legacy objective, uh, sorry, success text. Now also, if you want to use this text type here, we'll have to bring in something else as well. So we'll be using unity engine.ui. Okay, save that. We'll go back to unity just to make sure there's no errors. 
cool okay so those using sections worked so let's go to the start function here or start method first thing we're going to do so when this script starts up we want to gain access to the components from the game object so let's say text mesh pro underscore objective text equals text mesh pro underscore objective dot get component of type text mesh pro ui and then the second one will be we'll copy and paste that and then we'll change objective to distance and we'll change the same here to distance so when this starts up, what it will do is it will take these two game objects and it will get the text mess pro U GUI, that's a mouthful, text mess pro U GUI components from the game objects and it will populate this variable here with that component. So this is the text mess pro section. And then we want the legacy section. So this is where the two types differ is getting the components from the game objects. Whereas changing the text of both objects is pretty much the same. So here we'll say legacy objective underscore text equals legacy objective dot get component. And this time we want to say text. And then last but not least is success. So I'm going to use the update method here because it will run continuously. So it will allow us to keep our text updated in real time. So again, we'll make a text mess pro section and we will say text mess mesh pro. It's really hard to say that text mess pro underscore objective underscore text. So our component dot text equals objective a. So update our text here with the string objective A. Okay, so next is the same for text mesh pro underscore distance underscore text dot text equals distance. Now, because distance is a float, we will have to convert this to a string. So we can say dot to string because text here must be given a string, not anything else. Cool, okay. And last but not least, we'll say legacy. And then we'll say legacy underscore objective text dot text. So you notice these two sections here are the same, but the way you get the components is different. So dot text is objective underscore B. And then last but not least, legacy underscore success underscore text dot text equals success which is a bool so we'll convert that to a string to string and there we have it that is the final code now let's go back to unity to make sure that hasn't errored cool okay all looks good we'll click on our canvas game object here so we can see our variables here don't have any data so let's give them something to display on screen so objective a will say find the missing orbs and then we can say, what's the distance to the orbs? Eight meters. And then objective B will be eat the found orbs. <laughs> and then we'll say, <laughs> success equals true. And I'll click play on that. Cool. So we have eight missing orbs to find. And then the missing orbs have been found and eaten. <laughs> Great. Okay. And then you can see if I mess around with these, it changes in real time on and off, on and off, you know, eat the missing melons. Perfect. Okay. So that is that for this video. Now I'm not going to go over any doc strings because it's a pretty small script, but if you want to take it further and have a dedicated function or method that gets the components and updates the components, then feel free to do that. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope that helped and I will see you guys next time. Take care.